Today we will take a closer look at a very interesting internal design competition within the VW Group. The challenge to build the best car with only 3 liter fuel consumption on 100 kilometers. It all started in 1991 when Austrian Chancellor Wranitzki invited tech experts to discuss the future of mobility. One of the guests was Ferdinand Piech, grandson of Ferdinand Porsche and at this time Audi CEO. Wranitzki was asking if it would be possible to halve the current fuel consumption of around 10 liter on 100 kilometers to 5 liter anytime soon. Piech felt challenged and said, why only 5 liter? We will build a 3 liter car before the year 2000. This kind of slipped out of his mouth in this moment, but it wasn't too unrealistic. Before, when he was Audi CTO, he always gave his engineers the task to calculate the lowest possible fuel consumption if they would invest more in certain areas. So he kind of had a feeling for how low the fuel consumption could go. And Audi did not only have the key ingredients for a low consumption car at the time, lightweight aluminium structures, low drag car bodies and low consumption TDI diesel engines, they also had the confidence at the time to take on any challenge after they brought 5-cylinder engines, turbocharging, quattro all-wheel drive and they were developing the luxury first-generation Audi A8 at the time. And by the way, if you want to know more about Audi's 1991 all-aluminium Quattro Spider project and why it failed, check out my other video below. So for Piech, the 3-liter car before the year 2000 was a great engineering challenge and he started the project at Audi. Furthermore, he knew from previous calculations that even the 3-liter car would only be an intermediate step for later 2- and 1-liter cars. It was clear that this car should have four seats, a decent trunk and all that at only 600 kg. This is what their internal calculations suggested. In terms of aerodynamics, it was clear they would choose a low drag basic shape. One of the best shapes has the Penguin with a drag coefficient of around 0.1, but it's hard to turn this into a usable shape for the customer. The Puffer Fish was a more usable shape with low drag as well, and so this became the role model for Audi's 3 liter car. In 1993, Piech became CEO of mother brand VW and the Audi project lost a bit of its drive. In 1997, Audi presented the two concept cars AL2, which were already very close to the later production version. In the same year, the Mercedes A-Class, a car with similar concept and high center of gravity, had its problems with rolling over at quick directional changes in a Swedish test. So Mercedes stopped sales and fitted all cars with the stability program ESP to be able to reliably pass this test. BW CEO Piech intervened at Audi and requested that the A2 can do this test even without ESP. Therefore, they increased the track width at the rear. But after Piech went to VW, the Audi project slowed down and he wasn't sure if they could still make it until the year 2000, like he promised back in 1991. And so he thought about building a 3-liter car at VW to create an internal design competition to push each other to better performance. VW was working on two projects for small efficient cars at that time, the Swatch car and the Futura. Piech was never a supporter of the Swatch car because with its short two-seater concept, it wasn't a proper car for him. And so VW left the project, Mercedes took over and it later became the Smart 4.2. The Futura was a concept which looked good on car shows, but was smaller than a Golf, more expensive to produce and the customer should pay the higher price because it's a lifestyle car. Piech didn't like it and also cancelled this project. Instead, VW took the Polo platform, updated it and reduced the wheelbase. It first came on the market as Seat Arosa, so Seat could sort out any problems at production start and VW released the Lupo shortly after. But VW didn't have much money for the 3L project at that time and since the Lupo was a standard car with standard engines anyway, they could create a more efficient version of it instead of designing a completely new car. Since the 3L engine for the Audi came from Wolfsburg anyway, Piech started a project where they put the 1.2 liter TDI engine in the Lupo. And VW now worked on their own 3L car. First, everyone was skeptical if you could turn a standard production car in a highly efficient 3-liter car. Audi was already working on a car especially for this target for years and with a lot of resources. And VW just took a shorter Polo and tried the same. On the other hand, Piech as VW CEO was overseeing the whole group. He thought it would be a good idea to keep the aluminium competence at Audi. 
So VW shouldn't build a fully aluminium car like Audi. Martin Winterkorn, CTO at VW at that time, already tried to reduce the weight of the Lupo as much as possible. Then, in 1996, the VW engine department could reach an important milestone, the so-called pumpe Düse technology. In a diesel engine, you want the highest possible fuel pressure, so you can inject fuel and smaller particles, and even multiple times within a fraction of a second. All this helps to burn the fuel more efficiently, which gives you more power and less consumption. Until then, diesel engines worked with mechanical pumps, which were driven by a cam belt, and they spread the fuel pressure to all cylinders. The new pumpe Düse technology basically means, as the name suggests, that every injector has its own high-pressure pump, and that one is driven by the camshaft. So you can build high pressure directly before the injector. Such a system can reach a fuel pressure of over 2000 bar, so much higher than previous systems. At the same time, the injection could now be controlled electronically directly at the injector, instead of mechanically in an external injection pump. So VW suddenly had a much more efficient engine in the shelf and with a thermal efficiency of 45%, which is extremely high for a combustion engine. And suddenly this made the whole project a bit more realistic. Because the car didn't have to be at 600 kg to reach the low consumption. And keep in mind that a standard diesel Lupo had a weight of over 1000 kg. Now they changed the target weight to 725 kg. But also that still meant a massive weight reduction compared to a standard Lupo and hence high costs. Money which VW didn't have for such a project. They recalculated a number of times and further increased the target weight to 800 and finally to 850 kg. So a 150 kg reduction compared to a normal Lupo is a challenge, but not impossible. And within their budget. And now the 3 liter car could simply be a version of the standard Lupo with a production of around 50 per day, instead of a completely standalone car project. With the new engine generation, also the aerodynamics didn't have to be as extreme as they planned in the beginning of the project. It was all about fine-tuning. So let's take a closer look at the technology of the Lupo 3L. 80% of the car were new compared to a standard Lupo. They still used the same steel body of a normal Lupo to save costs, but the challenge was to reduce the weight as much as possible without compromising safety. The doors, fenders and the bonnet are aluminium. The tailgate was aluminium outside and magnesium inside. At the same time it was extended and had sharper separation lines for less drag. All these different materials increased the risk of corrosion and so all different materials were insulated from each other. Aluminium parts were even stored separately in production, they used thin layers between different materials and even used light and green coated screws between aluminium and steel which you can only use once because you damage the coating when removing them. Also they introduced new production methods such as punch riveting to save weight and energy. And the roof was laser welded. They also used thinner windows and in the end they could reduce the weight by 154 kg compared to a standard Lupo SDI. Overall the weight was 826 kg now, so well below the target of 850 kg. In terms of aerodynamics, they could reduce the drag coefficient from 0.32 to 0.29. And keep in mind here that also the frontal area was reduced by a 10 mm lower suspension and thinner low resistance wheels with aluminium magnesium rims. The car got a new very smooth front bumper without upper air intake and a rear bumper with a diffuser. And also the sills got a new cover for less drag. The engine is a 1.2 liter three cylinder diesel engine with a turbocharger with variable turbine geometry. The aluminium block has grey cast iron liners. The bolts go straight through the engine and they chose three cylinders for less internal friction. It has a light steel exhaust with two catalytic converters and no particle filter but could still reach only 90 gram per kilometer and can be registered in today's Euro 4 class. VW also used a special low friction 0W30 engine oil, which shouldn't be mixed with other oil. The gearbox was another factor to reach the efficiency target. It has longer gear ratios and they wanted the customer to shift early, so it was clear they want an automatic gearbox. But the standard torque converter was too inefficient, so they used a traditional 5-speed gearbox with clutch and automated it with an electric hydraulic system. 
So you can drive the car in automatic mode, sport with 45 kW and economy with 33 kW, or you choose the gears yourself. They also integrated a start-stop function. In economy mode, the engine switches off when the car stops and restarts the engine as soon as you release the brake. Therefore, they installed a large capacitor to stabilize the electric system. Also, they updated the starter with a small ECU unit for better control to reduce stresses, which should result in a 4 times higher lifetime. Because the drivetrain is so efficient, it doesn't provide enough heat for the interior. Therefore, they installed an additional electric heater in the dashboard. Also, the suspension was updated significantly. The track width was increased by 33 mm. Subframe, wishbones and shocks were aluminium and they used thinner, lighter steel springs. Optionally, you could order an electric power steering, which only needs power when you actually steer. They used Martin side wheel carriers and special low resistance wheel bearings. The front brake calipers were lighter and the rear brake drums the lightest car drums in the world at this time. And even the ABS system used smaller valves for less weight. There was no spare wheel and only an emergency set instead. In the interior, the steering wheel was magnesium, the front seat frames aluminium and the rear seats lighter. And also the pedal block was aluminium. So VW used lighter materials everywhere where it made sense and where you could get weight reduction easily. In the end, the Lupo 3L was presented at the Paris Car Show in 1998, so over a year before Pierre's self-set deadline. You could buy it in 1999 and it was two years earlier than the Audi A2 3L version. VW now proved that a car with a fuel consumption of less than 3 liter on 100 km was possible and they even invited Greenpeace to test drive the car. Greenpeace has been the biggest critic of VW at that time and they created their own 3 liter car smile based on a Renault Twingo. In the end they could reach 3.3 liter with it. When they test drove the Lupo 3L on a 104km trip in Sweden, they reached an average consumption of 2.49 liter on 100km with it. The two-seater Smart of Mercedes had around 3.5 liter. But the Lupo 3L with its front engine, front rear drive concept was such an extremely optimized car that it got a bit too light at the rear axle, which resulted in some oversteering tendencies. VW put 7kg lead blocks behind the rear bumper as a quick fix. They then put the battery in the trunk from summer 2000, so they could remove one of these ballast weights. From summer 2001, they used the standard steel tailgate at the Lupo, which allowed them to reduce costs and also remove the last ballast weight at the back. To further reduce costs and to use the extensive knowledge VW gained with this project, they decided to bring a Lupo GTI version. They also used the battery in the back here and aluminium fenders and bonnet. Additionally, they used the Lupo 3L molds for the bumpers, which gave the GTI a more unique look and used the resources more efficiently. VW confirmed later on that the customer's wish for power is around three times higher than the one for economy, but for PH it was still important to show the technical competency of VW. So while VW presented Vernado, Phaeton and Touareg, they also had a fully usable 4-seater 3-liter car in their portfolio. And although they didn't really earn money with this project, they could use the experiences for other car projects later on. Pierre already worked on the 1-liter car, which he used to drive to his last shareholder meeting in 2002 with a fuel consumption of 0.89 liters on 100 kilometers. Today, more than 20 years later we can say that the Lupo 3L is still a great car, the only weak point being the special hydraulic gearbox. So some people convert it back to the standard manual gearbox. And you can usually find Lupo 3Ls with a lot of mileage, which proves their reliability, and pretty low prices for such an engineering milestone. So I hope you enjoyed this little piece of history and please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for more videos like this. See you at the next video.